Hello everyone, my name is Greg and I dev stuff. Welcome everyone to the episode 5 of Yakuza like game in Unity. Today we will animate blocking incoming attacks from the enemy. Clean your root folder. This episode is brought to you by generous support of people on Patreon and members on YouTube. If you want to join them, link to my Patreon in the description and join button available right now on YouTube. In the previous episode we made an animation for blocking for our enemy. To make player block, add the animation to the player animator controller. Add blocking parameter. Let's set up transition between states. On the enter of the state, remove the has exit time parameter. Now we need to give control of the block state to the player. Open the player input. We want to add the block variable and modify it based on the player control scheme input. On the started we will set the block to be true. On the cancelled, we will set the block to be false. Started fires up when the button is pressed. And cancelled will fire up when you end pressing the button. So on the started we are setting up uh, the bool to be true. And on the cancelled we are setting up the bool to be false. Now we have an input to block. And we need to pass uh, this input to the animator. Yet we can simply pass it through the action manager. Because we will need a block manager to describe functionality of the block. Action manager simply pass up the values to the animator. While it will work for attack or locomotion, it will not work for the block. If the character is blocking, if he is being hit by an attack, we need to process this. And inside the block manager we will describe this functionality later on in the tutorial. Attach the block manager to the player and let's open it. Inside cache the reference to the player input. And in the update, if the input is not null, Set the block to what is being inputted.
Good. If I hold Shift, it will make the character block. Shift is the button we assigned on our control scheme. In your case, it can be something else. Now we want to make our enemy attempt to punch us. Select the enemy and add light and heavy attack parameter and add punch animator state in animator controller. Set up the punch animation. Now we want to make it so our AI agent will not only be able to block our attacks, but punch us in retaliation. Let's teach our uh, AI agent how to do so. Open the AI agent. Create a new bool variable called light attack. We need to cache the character animator. Because character animator is responsible for the communication of input for the character and animation of this character. In the update, let's extract block method. and comment the call of this method, so it will prevent the execution of this method. So from now on, our AI agent will not be uh, blocking, because we are going to test a block on the character, and we want the enemy only punching us for the time being. Create a new method called punch, and inside check the timer. And if the timer is more than 3 seconds, inverse the light attack. Send the state of light attack to the character animator. Let's test this. Yes, our enemy is punching and stopping after some time, but we are getting an error. The error is caused by the fact that our enemy lacks the attack manager, and our enemy lacks the trigger colliders on his limbs, similar to how our character works. Add the attack manager and let's add the trigger colliders on our enemy by copying the colliders from the player character to save some time.
When we are trying to detect the hit against something, we are checking for the character component on that object. So let's add a character component to the player. And let's test this. Yes, we are getting hit. We will come back to syncing in just a little. I want to attract your attention to the fact that we are reusing a lot of the scripts. Look at the player. It has character and block manager. Same as our enemy. If we select our model, it is even more similar. This is a very important for me, because in my opinion, the more you can reuse the same scripts for different cases, but with variety of context, it is a great way to save time. Look at this from this angle. Both enemy and player characters will have HP stats and stagger stats, and later on defense and maybe some other stats. So instead of creating separate scripts one for enemy stat, one for player stats. We, we are creating one script which carries those stats and reusing it for, for both enemies and for the player character. And later on we can reuse it for even more stuff, for example the allies of the player or neutral characters roaming in the battlefield or something like this. So. Uh, it will save a lot of time reusing the script as many times as possible. We will be exploring this concept much more later on in this tutorial. But one of the aim I have in this tutorial is to teach you how to make modular reusable code. To fix the weird problem with block being out of sync, open the animator, select the transition out of the block hit state, in the setting set interruption source to next state. This setting will set it so this transition can be interrupted. In our case, if in process of animating out of being hit by the attack, you are getting hit once again, you want your character to interrupt the current animation transition and immediately play the block hit animation once again. The condition for the interrupting this animation is based on the state we are transitioning towards, so we want to set the interruption source to the next state. That will fix the out of sync animation issue. Set the same state for the enemy. Good. This is it for this episode. If you have any questions or any ideas about code, please leave your comments below. If you are interested in seeing what will come out of this, please subscribe. If you want to support further, you can find my Patreon in the description. Special thank you to Cameron Smith and Andrew V. Long for their generous support. With best regards, see you in the next episode.